Hello and welcome everyone. Today we're going to look at how to use special right triangles to evaluate trig functions in all quadrants using radians. There is a companion worksheet that goes along with this. Uh, if you need a copy, uh, come see me or I will post it online. So the first thing that we need to do is think about a triangle uh, and a square actually. We're going to think about these two shapes together. Let's first take a look at the triangle. This is an equilateral triangle, and I'm going to initially let each side be of length 2. You'll see why in a second. Uh, and since it's equilateral, that means every angle is 60 degrees. Uh, and over here, I'll just write that that's also the same as pi over 3 radians. Then we're going to take this triangle and turn it into a right triangle by dividing it in half down the center. When we divide this in half down the center with the altitude, now the base here is 1, and the length of the altitude is going to be root 3. Why is it root 3? Well, because you can do the Pythagorean theorem. 2 squared would have to equal, let's say it, call it h squared plus 1 squared. So solving back around, uh, you get 3 equals h squared, so the height must be root 3. So that gives us uh, what we call a special right triangle. We've called it 30, 60, 90 triangle in the past, where all the sides have ratios 1, root 3, and 2, uh, with the two short legs and then the hypotenuse. Now, there's a similar special right triangle if we take a square and divide it in two. So if we take our square, and this square we can let have side length one, we divide it in half to make a little right triangle, then by the Pythagorean theorem, uh, c squared is one squared plus one squared, so c squared is two, which means the hypotenuse is the square root of two. And this is another example of our favorite special right triangles. We call this one a 45-45-90 triangle, or, and it's isosceles, so you'd also have it called an isosceles right triangle because it has equal sides. And in radians, that angle measures pi over 4. 45 and pi over 4 are the same thing. Okay, so let's uh, break this into these special triangles down here, going to the next line. So let's take uh, half of that isosceles, or... Um, of the equilateral triangle and rotate it around so the little 30 degree angle is kind of the base angle and I'm going to call that angle pi over 6 because we're trying to think in radians so we're going to call this a pi over 6 triangle and we're going to use this whenever we see angles uh, that are fractions of pi over 6 and let's label the side so the short leg was 1 the hypotenuse was 2 and the long leg was square root of 3 so we can use these ratios to represent those three sides. Um, I'm also going to do something a little sneaky, which is that the hypotenuse being 2 is sort of annoying. Uh, so I'm actually also going to scale all these numbers down and write them in red. So we can scale 2 down by divided by 2 and write that as 1. And if the hypotenuse then is 1, then this leg is 1 half and the long leg is square root of 3 over 2. Uh, and like you can use the values in red. Or you can use the values in green, like whichever you choose to memorize. The red ones might be a little more useful for unit circle trig. The green ones are a little more useful for like general geometry. It might be good to know both. They're just scaled up and down by two. Um, so that's the special right triangle with pi over six. You can take that same triangle with the exact same ratios and just flip it on its side. And then you have a pi over three angle. And we can copy in the same values using the same uh, color scheme. So that'd be 1, root 3, and 2. Or if we scale the hypotenuse down, the hypotenuse is 1, the short leg is 1 half, and the long leg is square root 3 over 2. And then we can take our 45, 45, 90 triangle, and I'll label that as pi over 4. I'm going to put little congruence markings. That's a usually a good way to, to show its isosceles. Um, and if we say that each side has length 1, then the hypotenuse has length square root of 2. Now, that's uh, one thing you can do on the unit circle. But again, we want to sometimes have the hypotenuse be 1. So I'm going to do uh, the hypotenuse. I'm going to scale that back down so the hypotenuse is 1, which means I'm dividing everything by root 2. So the legs will be, when I scale them down, they'll be 1 divided by root 2, which rationalizes to root 2 over 2, which is the familiar value you probably know. So if the hypotenuse is 1, then the legs are actually square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. 
And I do think this is a value you should rationalize just because square root of two is a very common decimal to know, you know, it's about 1.414. So then square root two over two is approximately, you know, 0 0.71. So that's a good value to know uh, and to have rationalized. So these are the three triangles that you need to know to do like all unit circle trig. Here's what I mean by that. Let's actually take a trip to circle town first because I mentioned circle trig, but we've been looking at triangles. Well, that's the cool thing about trigonometry is it's the union of triangles with circles and making sense of triangles and angles from zero to 360, zero to two pi in radians, um, while still being able to use triangles to help us out. So here is how we extend the idea of trigonometry to other quadrants. We start in a circle. And for now, let's say we have a circle of radius r, right? It doesn't have to be radius 1, it can be radius anything. And let's say that in quadrant 1, we have a point on the circle x, y, right? We call that point x, y on the circle. Well, we could draw the radius then here, right? So we could say this is also r. And then we could draw a vertical line. And that would be called, we could call that y. And we could draw a horizontal line. And that would be called x. Now, let's look at sine just for a minute. We're going to define sine of theta. Oop, there, we'll call that angle theta. We're going to define sine of theta as the ratio of the coordinate y over the value r. We're used to, our, the old us would define that as opposite over hypotenuse. And you can see in the triangle that that's actually the same thing. But here's why we would bother defining sine as y over r. Let's say that our angle wasn't in quadrant one. Let's say our angle was like over here in quadrant three. You know, a different angle, different point. I'm still going to call this xy. We could still call this r. But now we could still call this y. And we could still call this leg x. So there's still this idea that there's a hidden triangle, even though the angle we're looking at is actually like bigger than 180, right? You can't have an angle bigger than 180 in a triangle, but we can still make sense of sine and cosine because we can make this little thing that we're uh, going to call a reference triangle. And the idea that sine is y over r still makes sense, even in this weird quadrant, because there's still a secret little triangle going on there. So that's our definition of sine, is y over r. Similarly, we're going to define cosine as the adjacent x over the hypotenuse r, and tangent as the opposite y over the adjacent x. So these really are just SOHCAHTOA ratios, but on this new triangle where instead of opposite adjacent hypotenuse, we have x, y, and r. Same thing, different names, but this one abstracts to different quadrants a little more easily. Um, the reciprocal functions are just the reciprocal of those, so we have cosecant is r over y, secant is r over x and cotangent is x over y. I guess we should maybe make a note that since we're on a circle, the radius is not equal to zero. And similarly, we could look at observe from the circle that the radius squared is the same as x squared plus y squared, right? Just some like general conversion factors, useful things about r. Um, now it is possible for x and y to be zero. So we might, if we have some values here where things are undefined, that's interesting. Uh, we might have to come back to that later. Another interesting thing happens if we assume that our circle is not just a circle in general, but actually a unit circle. So if I draw another circle, and I say that this specifically has radius 1, and I draw a similar triangle, maybe I'll draw it in the second quadrant this time. So we still have a y and an x, and it's still a right triangle, but now the hypotenuse is 1 then all of these definitions actually simplify so that sine theta, I'm just gonna write on a unit circle uh, in blue, sine theta is just y. The cosine of theta is just x. The tangent of theta is still y over x. Um, the cosecant is one over y, just right, the, re the reciprocal. Uh, the secant is one over x and the cotangent 
is still y over x. That those bottom two didn't actually change. Um, so if we're if we know we're on a unit circle, we can use this simplified definition to find values. Sine theta is just the y value of a triangle or a coordinate going around the circle. So here's a little note and just a thing to remember that now that we're doing this, we're in math four, we're in different quadrants, trig functions output ratios of coordinates and not sides, right? The input is still angles, but the outputs are technically now ratios of coordinates, not just sides of a triangle, which means we can apply the ideas of trig to times when triangles don't make sense or aren't possible because we're sort of expanding our view of what trigonometry is. Um, one interesting thing, way to expand our view of what trigonometry is, is to observe that actually now trig functions can be negative. Um, because if we have y over r, but where the angle is in a quadrant, maybe like this is the angle where y is less than zero. Well, if y is less than zero and r is greater than zero, then the sine value, the ratio, would be a negative ratio, which doesn't make any sense at all when it comes to triangles. But we're not worrying about triangles anymore. We are thinking about coordinates. Uh, so that's what this third column is for, is I want to just make a quick uh, chart of like where each function is positive. So sine and cosecant, both related to the y and r. So y is positive in the top two quadrants and negative in the bottom. So we usually make a chart that's something like this. In the first and second quadrants, sine and cosecant are positive. And in the third and fourth, sine and cosecant are negative because they're both related to the y values. If your angle's in the third or fourth quadrant, the sine ratio should always be a negative answer. Cosine is the x values. You know, it's related to x and r. And same with secant. So let's think about where x is positive versus negative. Well, x is positive in the rightmost quadrants and negative in the left quadrant. So cosine and secant positive on the right, negative on the left, depending on where the side of your angle lives as you rotate a full two pi radians around. And tangent's actually confusing because it relates to x and y, right? It's the, it's the divisor. So in the first quadrant, so we have to be a little more careful. In the first quadrant, tangent's positive because x and y are both positive. And the other quadrant tangent's positive in is the third quadrant because x and y are both negative in that quadrant, so the ratio of them will become positive. And in the other two quadrants, tangent and cotangent, by the way, have that sign. We're going to use that this little chart or diagram of signs when we check our trig values because it's a really good way to check our answers and make sure that we understand that they, they have the correct uh, sign, S-I-G-N, when we're computing all of these, these little signs. All right, flip to the second page. Here's our general approach for finding trig all around the circle. The first thing we're going to do is sketch our angles. In this page, that's already been done for you, but if it's not done, you should draw that angle. Uh, or once you get a little more advanced, at least visualize the angle in your head. Then, if possible, you're going to make a triangle. Uh, then you're going to connect that to what we know about 30, 60, 90 and 45, 45, 90 triangles to find some coordinates of a point. Then we're going to use the coordinate definitions all from the other side or just regular triangles to solve for the trig. So that's what we're going to do. Let's do it. Uh, so the first thing that we have to find is they say sine of theta where theta is equal to pi over six. So the first thing we'll do is drop an altitude to the x-axis. It's really important that we always drop that altitude to the x-axis. Um, because we're thinking about opposite over hypotenuse, right? We're trying to like get our coordinates straight. We want to be consistent. And if you start doing the altitude, not the altitude, but you're going to the other axis or other things, it's not going to work out right. Okay, now pi over 6, that's a familiar angle, isn't it? Oh yeah, it is. It's the angle right here. Uh, so I noticed that I have pi over 6, and it's in the first quadrant. Uh, I'm going to use these red values because I want to feel like I'm on a unit circle. So I want my hypotenuse to be one. So I'm going to say that this is one, this is one half, and this is root three over two. And what that means is that the coordinates of that point are uh, root three over two comma one half. 
So those are the coordinates of that point. Why do I care about coordinates? Well, because our definition is that sine of theta is equal to y over r from the other thing on the other side. So what coordinate do I need? <clears throat> Excuse me, I need 1 half. So I'm going to report, uh, and I notice that r is 1. So y is 1 half, and r is 1. So I'm going to report that the sine of pi over 6 is equal to 1 half, because it's the opposite side of a what is effectively a 30, 60, 90 triangle. We're calling it pi over 6. And that's how you find like trig sort of in the first quadrant, the general basic approach. Uh, if you had a different angle, you'd use a different reference triangle, uh, but you do the same thing. One thing I really would like you guys to do is have good notation. So for example, always include the angle as the argument to the sine function when you solve. So uh, please don't just write stuff like sine one half. You've got the value right, but you've got the notation wrong. And I really, it's really important that we reinforce this idea that sine is a function that has in and out, and that the inputs are angles and the outputs are ratios. The more that we can do that, the happier we're going to be later on. All right, let's do some more. So uh, cosine of 5 pi over 4. So notice that I can't really draw, like, right, this is not the triangle to make. What we're going to do is make a triangle with the x-axis like this. And I'm going to use a little radian knowledge. So I know that this angle here, the straight angle, is pi, which is the same as 4 pi over 4, which means 5 pi over 4 is exactly 1 pi over 4 more than that. This is what we call a reference angle. And it's the angle that we're going to refer to when we think about triangles. Now, I'm thinking about, in quadrant 1, the triangle that has an angle of pi over 4 and sides of 1, 1, and square root 2, or uh, root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, and 1. Well, this has the same angle, it's just in a different quadrant. So as I label the sides of the triangle, I'm going to be really careful. Because uh, what I'm really doing is not labeling the sides, I'm labeling the coordinates of this point. So as I label this side 1, I'm also going to put a negative in front. Not because that's a negative distance or anything goofy, it's that it's really the coordinate of that point is negative 1. And the coordinate of this point, or the vertical distance, sorry, is also negative 1, which means the coordinates of that point are negative 1, negative 1. And then I need to label the hypotenuse root 2. That's always positive. Your radius is never negative. Let me get that out of here. So now I have a little triangle with negative 1, negative 1, positive root 2 and I have my coordinates here. So I know that cosine of theta is defined as x over r. x was negative 1, r was square root of 2. So it must be true that the cosine of uh, 5 pi over 4 is negative 1 over square root of 2. And I like to rationalize these values. It's, it's pretty standard to do so. So that's going to rationalize the negative square root of 2 over 2 as the cosine of 5 pi over 4. Uh, put that 2 back. Notice that when you write out your answer, you're putting the given value. You're not putting the reference angle pi over 4. You're putting 5 pi over 4 because that's the angle you were asked about. So again, we, we've got to put that angle in there because you can't just write cosine equals something. You have to tell me what the cosine, what is the angle you're taking the cosine of. Uh, Side note, while we're on this problem, had I used the triangle uh, with the hypotenuse of 1, so hypotenuse is of 1, and then I would label the sides as root 2 over 2, negative, and negative root 2 over 2, then I wouldn't have had to rationalize my result, because I already kind of did it. Um, so that's one reason that, like, personally, I actually prefer to label my triangles this way, so I don't have to, like, do division sort of artisanally every time. It's already been done for me. 
Um, but if you'd rather use 1, 1, root 2, and you're more comfortable with that, uh, that's fine with me also. Just whatever floats your boat. They, they both give you the same ratio because that's what trig is. It's all about ratios. Let's look at another angle. Now this angle is negative. Ooh, boy. So we have a quadrant 1 angle, which is nice. Um, and we're going to look for the coordinates of this point up here. To do that, we need to drop our altitude down here and locate our reference angle. The reference angle right here is whatever would complete a full circle. Reference angles are also always positive, so even though negative 5 pi over 3 is negative, I'm just going to call this angle pi over 3, because that's what I would need to complete a full circle. So this reference angle is basically telling me which special right triangle to refer to. So that is telling me about a 60, 30, 90 triangle over here. So I'm thinking about the other side of the page. You can go look at it if you need to. Um, and that had 1 root 3 and 2 as its ratios, or 1 half root 3 over 2 and 1, depending on if you like to scale your hypotenuse or not. Um, I don't like to scale my, or I do like to scale my hypotenuse, so I'm going to write this as 1 root 3 over 2 and 1 half right here on my diagram. Those are the values I'm going to use. Uh, I'm in quadrant 1, so all the coordinates are positive, so I don't have any negative sides here. Cosine of theta is defined as x over r, so cosine of negative 5 pi over 3 is going to be the x coordinate, positive half, over the r1. So I'll write my final answer, which is that cosine of negative 5 pi over 3, which is the angle it asked me to find the cosine of, is 1 half. You can think about that as like the short side, right, adjacent side of this 30, 60, 90 uh, triangle. Let's keep going. Uh, so now we have, ooh, calm down here. Now we have a tangent. So we're now in quadrant four. Drop the reference line. Always make that reference line with x. A lot of people in this situation get tempted to make their reference line with y, but notice how if I make this reference line in green, that messes up like the opposites and adjacents and, and things. It, it's going to give us actually the opposite, the uh, flip sign and cosine around in a way that we don't want. So we always go up to that x-axis. And again, our reference angle is just whatever completes the, the triangle, whatever's internal there in the triangle. So that's going to be pi over 3 is the reference angle. So I'm going to think about my friendly triangle, same as I had last time. Ooh, make that a little nicer. It doesn't have to be super nice, just it has to be a little bit to scale. You don't want it to look too squished. Uh, so that had sides 1 half, root 3 over 2, and 1 is the version that I like to use. So let me label these over. So that's a hypotenuse of 1. That would be uh, 1 half on the x, and root 3 over 2 on the y, labeling everything. Now if I label the y... Since that's going down, I need to label that as a negative coordinate. So the coordinates of this point are positive half, negative root 3 over 2. Now, let's do the tangent. So the tangent of theta is defined as y over x, opposite over adjacent. You can just do opposite over adjacent if you want. So the y is negative root 3 over 2, and the x is 1 half. So then that ends up being uh, negative root 3 over 2 times 2 over 1. Those 2s reduce out, and we get negative root 3. So I will write to report my final answer that the tangent of the angle it asked me about, which was 5 pi over 3, is equal to negative square root 3. And only a few more to do here. We'll just finish these out. This next problem is asking us to compute the cosine of 3 pi over 2. And here's something really goofy is going on. We can't draw a triangle. A lot of people try to draw this triangle. But compare that to every other triangle we've drawn, which has been a vertical side. Vertical, up and down. And that line I just drew is certainly not vertical. If you were to draw a reference triangle here... It would have to be vertical up to the origin, and it'd be kind of a squished flat triangle with like maybe a side, one side of length zero. I tell you what, don't worry about the triangles here. 
is not going to help you. Here's what helps. Uh, let's put ourselves on a unit circle, right? So we can actually pick any coordinate that's on the terminal side of this angle. So for example, I'd like to imagine I'm on a unit circle. And on the unit circle going around, this would have coordinate 0 for x and negative 1 for y. Now, this coordinate would be, just if I needed it, uh, would be 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, etc. Right? You can go around, go through those points, and create your circle. So I'm trying to find the cosine of 3 pi over 2. Well, cosine is defined as x over r. I said r is 1 and x is 0. So the cosine of 3 pi over 2 by this x over r definition is 0 over 1, which is 0. 0 over 1, by the way, is 0. 1 over 0, if you ever get that, is undefined. So report my final answer. And this is where the, the coordinate definition really, really comes into its own. Triangles will never solve this problem. You can't do it with triangles. But the quadrant angles are, in some sense, the most important angles all around a circle, right? 0, 90, 180, 0, pi. Those are the angles we want to know the values of. So we have to use coordinates to find it. The last one is an example of a reciprocal function. So secant is the reciprocal of cosine. And I actually think that it's kind of easier, well, maybe not necessarily, but it might be easier to find the cosine first and then take the reciprocal. It kind of depends on what you want to do and how you want to approach it. But the first thing you do is, as always, create a reference triangle. There's a right angle. And we think about what angle I'd need to complete the triangle. So this is negative 2 pi over 3. To make it up to pi, I would need an angle of pi over 3. So we're looking at that 30, 60, 90 situation again. Pi over 3, pi over 6, pi over 2. I don't know. Um, we're looking at this situation. Let's label the sides. In this case, uh, I don't want to deal with the rationalized values, so I'm going to use the... Uh, I should draw it this way. I'm going to use the version of this triangle that goes 1, root 3, and 2, and just label those sides out in this way. So we'll call this negative 1, this negative root 3, and the hypotenuse 2. Why are they negative? Because they're both in quadrant 3, and technically the coordinates of that point are negative 1, negative root 3. All right. We've made our triangle. We have our coordinates. Let's compute uh, the secant, or the cosine, and then the secant. So cosine of that angle would be x over r. So secant of that angle would be r over x. So uh, in this case, here's my r, here's my x, so we can just look at those values. There's the angle. r was 2 and x was negative 1, so I'll simplify that to negative 2. And that's the answer I would report. Um, cosine, now that I have the secant, if I wanted to get the cosine, it would be x over r would just be negative 1 half. Um, so I could also have gotten negative 1 half and then taken its reciprocal to get negative 2. So that's how you deal with reciprocal functions. You can just think about them in terms of sine and cosine, find that value, take the reciprocal. Um, and then just as always, when you're doing any of this, Pay attention to notation and pay attention to the sign, S-I-G-N, of your answers. Uh, because a lot of times your answers will be negative, your answers will be positive, uh, but it matters, right? You can't just ignore that sign. It, that looking at the quadrant tells you the sign of your answer, and you have to look at the quadrant to get those correct. All right, folks, that's it for this worksheet. The best thing to do for you right now is lock this in with a lot of practice. The more trig you practice in the more different ways, the better you will be at it. It's probably going to take you a long time in the first few problems, but then it starts to speed up because you get really, really practiced at it like anything new. Uh, but all the energy you spend learning this will pay off when you're able to, to rattle off these values easily without memorizing, but just 
because you know how to visualize triangles in your head. All right, I'll see you in the next video.